This video is recorded at Fair Game. Fair Game is located in Downers Grove, Illinois. Please visit their website for more information, fairgamestore.com. Welcome back to another episode of Brothers Dim. Thanks for tuning in to our YouTube channel. This is Bob here recording a voiceover from one of our local tournaments at Fair Game in Downers Grove, Illinois. Uh, on the left, we have one of our local players, Wes, and he is playing the Trooper deck, uh, Iden, First Order Stormtrooper, and Mud Trooper on Military Camp Battlefield. Uh, really like his playmat. I believe that is Sabine. Not Sabine, I'm sorry, Sabine. Uh, and on the right, we have one of our fellow Brothers Dim Loth Wolf Pack members, Chris, and he is playing uh, something that he brewed up in the crock pot recently. It is Django Fett, Executioner, and Sentinel Messenger, and he's playing on Feed Battlefield, and he is playing his deck on a very, very out of this world play mat. Courtesy of uh, Ultimate Guard. So they are shuffled up. Looks it's like fine. they're yeah. drawing their opening yeah. hands. Yeah. Um, you know, I really like this trooper yeah, deck that Wes is playing. I've actually yeah. played it. We uh, talked about it on one of our Loth Wolf Pack, Loth Wolf podcasts. And, you know, it's got a lot of trooper mechanics, uh, has a lot of health, which actually in this matchup, they both have the same amount of health. They are both flexing 27 health. Um, so we'll see how it turns out. We'll see who's faster in the matchup. And see what happens. So, uh, it looks like Chris has, like, I believe a Vibro Cutlass, a Forsaken, a Dagger, and he's pitching all of it. Um, didn't really get to peek at Wes's hand. I believe he had some best defenses in there. But he kept, I believe he might have kept those best defenses. We'll find out in the upcoming turns. So Chris's deck, you know, obviously it's rainbow. He's going to have a lot of great removal. That's probably pretty cheap. Uh, with it being villain, you know, he's going to have access to Forsaken and you know, good villain removal and motive probably. Um, and you know, with Django Fett, you can make a lot of money very quickly. So we'll see how Chris is going to sync this up. I'm sure, he's got the bounty hunter mask. Um, I'm sure, he's got some good weapons in there too to try and you know, ping off these stormtroopers and the mud troopers. So um, we'll see how it goes. Right now, I'm thinking you know that West might have the advantage just because if if he can win the, the roll off and get his battlefield. I mean, having the troopers plus mud trooper being out there, he'll be able to reroll a bunch of dice. Which will be, which will make him a lot faster and beneficial. So, Chris looks like he had a probe and a Bible cutlass. He's going real quick to his dice. Chris looks like he got five. Wes looks like he got six. So Wes is going to probably opt to choose his battlefield, which he looks like he does. Chris is going to put feet away, throw his shields out there. And he's putting them on Django Fett, the Father Fett. So here we go. You know, we'll see how the, who can punch out 27 damage first. Very friendly game here. Chris and Wes shaking hands. Love to see that in your local local friendly game store. Oh, and right off the bat, Wes probes, probes Chris. Chris is not a not a fan of being probed. Oh. Quick draw holster and oh the bounty hunter mask. So Wes has an idea he's probably gonna have these upgrades and what? Chris is gonna get some money quickly. So not a good probe, kind of as a bummer for Wes. We'll see how Chris is gonna respond. You don't really have I don't know, it's hard to say. It's definitely a good a good These two are very good players, play them all the time at Fair Game. Um, Wes usually plays Afro, which I'm a big fan of, so we kind of compare decks. Oh, Chris probes, what a, what an un, unfriendly move. He's going to probe him right back. Should at least buy him dinner first before you probe him back, you know. Ooh, and he's going to get an LS1 cannon. He's going to get an event. Oh, ATRT, both whiff on their probes. Hate to see it. Oh, and then Wes is going to just counter intelligence. So he's going to look and see what he's got left. Looks like an automated defense is the only event, so he's going to put it on top of his deck. 
which, you know, actually is not too bad for Chris because he's got the Sentinel Messenger, so he'll be able to have access to that card in a few minutes. So he's going to roll out a one melee and a two range with Django Fett. I know the glare is kind of difficult, but that's why we're here, I guess. So Wes is going to play his ATRT. Great card, especially in the Trooper deck because it's going to allow him to spike pretty much all of his trooper dice. Um, great upgrade in this deck. So Chris right away is going to ping two at Aiden. You know, I think Aiden is the target if you can punch her out very quickly, but Mud Trooper is very underestimated, and I'm going to say that, and you'll probably see why in a few minutes if you've never played against him. Uh, with him just being on the table, Allows you to re-roll a trooper, or sorry, allows you to re-roll any dice after you activate a leader or a or the mud trooper. So he's going to roll out. Looks like he gets a two focus and a two range. So Wes is actually doing the power action on the military camp here. So he can re-roll, but he's got to activate two characters first. But it looks like he's going to potentially opt to utilize mud trooper's ability since. Uh, Iden is a leader. He can re-roll. Uh, the two focus and the two range is pretty, pretty spicy, so he might opt to keep that for now. Looks like Chris is questioning, as always. Um, you know, he's always wondering what's, what's up and if everyone's playing correctly. And he's going to roll in the First Order Stormtrooper. Looks like he got a two for one. And he's going to utilize the, I believe, military camp ability to re-roll. And he got a blank. So Chris is going to pump out one more damage into Aiden. She is now at three. What's Wes going to do here? He is going to activate the ATRT. Looks like he gets a plus two. So right now he's showing four, four range or potentially four focus. Chris is going to roll out the Sentinel Messenger. Looks like he got a shield. He's going to automate a defense that two focus. Good move by Chris. Um, but Wes is going to respond by just doing four damage right into Django. Two shields off, two damage on. Chris is going to take the shield, put it right on Django. He's got to protect Django. That's his, that's his, uh, his bell cow on this on this team right here. Wes is going to activate the Mud Trooper. Mud Butt looks like he got a. Oh, he re-rolled it. He rolled the first order Stormtrooper. And Chris is going to roll in the Executioner. He got two, I think. Uh, Mud Trooper put in two more damage. Chris is going to. Put two damage onto Aiden. So right now, Aiden's at five, Jango's at three. Nope. Bounty Hunter, Trooper, Droid. Chris is. Yeah, if one of them's a Trooper, you can do all character dice. It's not a bad reroll for you. Yeah, it's not the worst. I think I'm going to claim this. I think that's probably a good one. Yeah. Wes is going to claim here. Chris is going to play the Bounty Hunter Mask, you get a dollar, and the first equipment that you play. And it looks like Chris passes. So at the end of round one, um, Chris put in to put in five damage on Aiden, but Wes was pretty ramped up. I mean, the ATRT out there is, is huge for his his board state. Chris has got a lot of money. Let's see, he's definitely we know he has the vibro cut list, so he's gonna probably try and play that as soon as possible. Get that out there. He's got the money to pay for it. We'll see how Wes starts out the turn. Sinking. And synergy is very important with the trooper deck. Um, I usually like to activate the stormtrooper first because then you can activate, you can reroll if he rolls a bad dice. So Wes is going to out the gate put out an LS1 hand cannon. Chris is going to put out a quick draw holster, make a dollar, utilizing Jenga's ability. Sneaky play. Yep, any weapons. Wes, let's see what he does. Probably going to want to activate. And it looks like he's going to do that. So, let's see how he does it. He activates Aiden. Now he can re-roll. Aiden looks like she rolls a blank, a discard, 
And a three indirect. Well, I think you have to activate him first. Four, no, one. it's after you activate this character or oh, she's a leader. Chris's okay. question oh, yeah, how Wes is playing this deck. Yeah. Yeah. Chris. Okay, and then. Wes is going to re roll <laughs> utilizing the. That's a I believe the, the Mud Trooper ability. <laughs> and he's going to re roll again utilizing the military camp. And he rolls blinks twice. <laughs> Hopefully he remembers to activate another character with military camp. Yep. Looks oh, like wait, Chris sorry. played the Vibro Cutlass, so Wes, ooh, yeah. Wes just remembers now, and Chris being a friendly gent lets him, allows it to happen. So, first order Stormtrooper rolled the two range, they're activating the first turn, then Chris would have played the Vibro Cutlass, so now it's back on Wes. Chris, very, very nice move there, friendly, friendly gameplay. ATRT rolls a plus two, I believe, I can't I think that's a two. See, not really. yeah, so, there's a lot of damage to be had out here. <sighs> Chris is contemplating. Yeah, he's got, yeah. Wes has four melee showing, potentially oh, yeah, three yeah. discard, potentially five indirect for one. So, a lot of ways Wes can go with this. Chris is going to automate a defense. The two range. So smart play. No, now he's going to have to activate someone else. Mud Trooper comes in. Looks like Mud Trooper gets a one resource. He's going to re-roll that item dice and get two range again. So this deck hits hard if you can roll hot. Chris will now activate Sir Django. And he gets a one disrupt on the Vibro Cutlass, a blank, and I believe it was a one melee. So he does have the mask for me. So Wes is going to put in, I believe, four damage right at Django. So Django's now at seven of 12 now because he's got the Bounty Hunter mask. Chris rolls in Sentinel Messenger, gets a resource, utilizes the ability to look at the first card, opt to not play it. Wes will take the dollar, and now he has the ex action to potentially do four, uh, sorry, three in direct. Executioner rolls in, I believe that's a dollar. But it's like with Django, we got to build that way. For sure. But that for at least... Wes is... I did hit a step on it, so there you go. He's got a disrupt, and I believe it's a three indirect for one. Let's see how he wants to do this. He's going to do damage first. As he's going to discard one. Let's see what he gets. One of two. Oh, the heirloom. It's a good card in this deck. They're all, they all, they all have melee. Uh, Django has some range, but looks like Chris is going the melee route. Chris takes two dollars here. Always swimming in cheese. Uh, Wes is going to do three indirect, which Chris will split up. He does one one on execution of messenger, and he's going to put one more on the sentinel messenger. Wes, with everybody activated and exhausted, probably going to claim here, unless he's got something else. Looks like that he claimed. Chris is going to pitch a ride shield to re-roll. Yeah, it looks like he gets a two melee, a one melee, and a one resource. The right shield could have come in handy, but I mean, he, Chris probably knows that he's up a creek right here. Oh, sorry, West claims now. I apologize. The viewers at home, Chris is going to take. He's going to do some damage at Iden, take a dollar, and pass. So end of round three, Iden has eight damage. Uh, Django has, so 8 of 12, Django has 7 of 12, uh, Executioner has 1, Messenger has 2, and Mudbutt and First Order Stormtrooper are unscathed at this point, at the end of round 2. So we will see in round 3 who will prevail and win the round. So Wes going first is going to power action. And he likes to activate Iden first, so we're going to see that happen. He gets a two range, a plus three, and I believe it's a discard. He's going to activate the first order stormtrooper, um, who gets a two for one. Utilizing military camp, he's going to reroll this discard. And it looks like he gets another two. That's a lot of damage. That's. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, potentially. And if, unless Chris has some removal, which looking at his hand, peeking at it, looks like all upgrades. Chris is in trouble. What's he going to do? What is he going to do? He's going to activate Django. No, it's not. You know, maybe think that he might put all this damage into someone else. It looks like he gets a blank uh, and two range. So one range, one range. Um, I think Wes is going to probably take out Django, which, yeah. Oh, he's going to utilize the quick draw. And he rolls a blank. Chris, where are the rolls at, man? So, okay. Wes is licking his chops. He's thinking how he's going to divvy up all this damage. He only needs to put in 7 of 12. He needs to put 5 right there, and he's going to do the 5. Thankfully, that plus 3, he doesn't have to overkill. So he puts 5 in Django. Fibro Cutlass redeploys. He's going to put it on the Executioner, which could be deadly. Um, if he kills someone with the Executioner, he will then re-ready re him. That could be pretty, pretty sweet. And as always, Chris rolling in the cheese. Wes is going to opt to do two at the at the executioner, leaving two out there. Now I think he's doing this because he wants to get the most out of it with the ATRT. Totally get it. Um, so that's a smart play. Chris is paying three. It looks like oh, Vader's saber on the Sentinel Messenger. Could also be pretty spicy right now. And he's splitting it up. Obviously a good play. Making you know both of them a target. In case one of them's gonna go down. So Chris is gonna have to do a lot this turn. But neither of them have activated, so we'll see what happens. Wes is going to activate the ATRT. And it looks like he got a plus one. Chris will respond by activating the Sentinel Messenger, and he rolls a one melee, two melee. Looks at the top card with the Messenger's ability, opting to not play it. So three damage. Still would not kill Iden, but it would put her one away from death. Ooh, best defense. Ouch. So Wes is going to put the damage on First Order Stormtrooper. Um, this is going to activate Executioner, and oh, he gets two for one and a two. Now, he could kill the Sentinel, or he could kill the First Order Stormtrooper right here and then re-ready the Executioner. Chris is probably very excited right now. It would be a shame if Wes had something to remove him. Oh. oh my gosh. Best defense. Back to back. Wes just says, sorry Chris, not today. And Chris is now... Ouch. Sorry Chris. Well, let's see what he does. It's not over till it's over. Looks like he's got a bounty hunter mask in his hand. He's putting a bounty hunter mask on Sentinel Messenger. Plus one health. Wes will activate Mud Trooper. Mud Trooper gets a blank. Reroll gets a two melee, or sorry, two range. So again, a lot of damage coming out of this deck. Chris, we already know that he doesn't have any removal. He's going to play a Mandalorian jetpack on the messenger. So. I believe that's five. I think it's five. But I believe one is a plus one, so he doesn't have money right now. So he's going to pitch a reroll. Looks like he gets a plus one and a one range. So now he's looking at four. Four free range. Chris is. Looks like he claims. Wes is going to deal four to, I'm assuming, yep, to the Executioner, and the round is over. So, Wes is pretty far ahead. Oh, no, I don't think, I don't know if Wes ever put out the other three damage. He probably would have put it on the Mud Trooper. 
from the second best defense, but um, no, one, no one noticed it. So we'll see if that matters to me. Um, Chris is going to use the military camp to activate the executioner, and he does have the option because he is a trooper, he may re roll the trooper dice, the executioner's dice. So Looks like he's going to get a two, ooh, a two range and a four for one on that vibra pet list. This could be big. Oh, he's going to do this. It's a good thing about you know the trooper deck. They does they do have a lot of good removal, a lot of cheap removal, measure for measure and such. Near miss, having all trooper guys that helps. Chris, oh, he fumbles the dice, but he's going to do two damage. On Iden. So Iden is now ten of twelve. Wes is looking, looking at his cards. He's going to activate Iden. Looks like Iden gets a two range, a one resource, and a three indirect. That's it. I can free three and direct, that is. Hmm. Looks like Chris has a probe. Probably looks like a Forsaken. That may be a Fear and Dead Men. I believe that is a Fear and Dead Men. Which um, is going to probe here. While that Fear and Dead Men could, have, could be huge if he got that off. Four damage on everybody. So he's going to probe. He gets an intense fire. And. I forget what that gun is called. It came out in the so I think it like helps troopers. Forgive me at home. Don't play that card very often. So Chris probed. Wes is going to do three indirect, probably forcing Chris into some tough decisions. He is going to probably split it up, so it looks like he's going to do... Two on the messenger, one on the executioner, killing the executioner, and redeploying the Vibra Cutlass, probably a pitch in the Bounty Hunter Mask. So now we have a fully souped up, scary Sentinel Messenger. Probably not that scary though, because it's a big guy. With Palpatine's face. Alright, Chris is going to activate Sentinel Messenger, do what he can, Let's see what he gets. Could be big. Looks like a plus two on the Vader Saber, a two melee on the Messenger, a blank, and I think that's a shield on the, the Viper Cutlass. So four damage, could kill. First Star Stormtrooper. He's going to put two more damage from Iden's dice into Messenger. Chris is going to pitch a. Go on the rockets. To re roll. He's trying to go for max. This has got to be his turn. He gets a blank and a shield again. Uh, ooh. Oh, wow. Wes got himself out of a pickle right there. Had Chris, have, he could have potentially killed Iden, but she's already activated, so it's not really helpful. Um, Chris is going to reroll again and get. Looks like the same thing. No, I think he got two indirect. Or sorry, one indirect on the Gauntlet Rockets. Or sorry, the um, Mandalorian jetpack and a blank on the Vibra Cutlass. They still can kill the First Order Stormtrooper here, which, if Wes activates him, he could potentially. Yeah. Do you have any money? Looks like a two range. Now he could reroll that item dice if he chooses. Might keep that money for something else. Yeah, but those are dead cards in this deal. Okay, Chris re-rolls. Looks like he got a shield two shields. Money was taken in the item dice. Wes is gonna roll in the ATRT plus one, so he's looking at three right now. Which I think is the right Chris to close shields. That was huge. Huge. Alright. Um, Chris is. Ooh, he's not looking good right now. So. He. I believe that card is. 
Fear and Dead Men, which right now, with the two, it's almost a feel bad. He's gonna do four. Kill the first order stormtrooper. And now he's gonna pay one to roll then the Vader dice. Gets a one um, resource. Or sorry, I'm sorry. He's paying one to roll in the character dice again, utilizing the Vader's saber ability. And got the resource. So looks like West has. Three, he's just gonna do them. Two shields off, one Dana John. Chris, not looking good. He's gonna claim. Wes is going to pass. End of round four. Uh, I think that's that's all all she wrote for Sentinel Master. Troopers are loaded. And yeah, Chris is showing off the fear and dead man, which I get it. Like we saw it at home. Wes probably wasn't seeing that coming. If he got that off, I mean, that could have been a game changer. He would have killed the Stormtrooper. Had he gotten the Fear and Deadman on the Vibro Cut list, that's for it, everybody. That kills Aiden. That kills the Stormtrooper. That leaves Mudbutt by himself. And we all know what happens when Mudbutt's by himself. Not good things. So Chris is going to probably activate, do what he can, and try and, get his, try and snake out a win here. Now don't forget that there's three damage that's probably on Mud Trooper that Wes forgot about from the second best defense. I said we'll see if that plays a part in the end of this game. Just because. Yeah, why not? I don't care. Yeah, you can do it. This is rolling in. That's right. He's getting a good good shake in there. He's utilizing Sentinel Messengers. I cannot do it. I couldn't really see what he got, but uh, attack mass. <laughs> you know me. Yeah. Yes. I got Going so for the win here. Can he do one damage yeah. with three I dice? Han Solo said, never tell me the odds, but yeah. the odds are not in Chris's favor. And he gets some damage from Aiden. So, friendly handshake at the end. Very good game. You know, it would have been interesting had Chris have gotten off the Fear and Dead Men. Um, he definitely took a few extra turns to ramp up versus you know, Wes getting that ATR team in the beginning was humongous to his board state. Um, being able to spike all the trooper dice was good. LS1 cannon had some clutch turns too where it got some indirect in. And yeah, this Iden, Iden trooper deck is a, is a heavy hitter. And I think, you know, Chris, even though he's in the crock pot, I think the rainbow decks are obviously his forte, and I think there's there's something to be be found with the Django decks. We haven't seen Django really hit tier one yet, but you know we'll head back to the crock pot and see if we can find something else. And so, thank you for tuning in to the Brothers Dim podcast or Brothers Dim YouTube channel. You can check us out on our podcast, The Loath Wolf Pack. And this is Bob signing out. Thanks again for tuning in. Catch you later.